Hi, in this course, I'm going to show you an overview about how to read laptop schematic step by step. So let's get started. So as you can see here, basically, this is just one page of this laptop schematic. Here, as you can see, in the left, this is basically the power jack. As you can see, we have here the DCN connector. Okay, so the, this is the power jack. Okay, here, as you can see, the pin number one and pin number two. As you can see, here we have the 19 volts. Okay, and here we have the ground. So the 19 volt goes directly to these two inductors. This is basically the symbol for inductor. As you can see, we have here PL6, PL3. So the reference for the inductor is L or PL. Okay, so 19 volt will pass through these inductors and then goes through this diode. This is basically the protection diode as we have seen before this is a zener diode okay so this is pd7 so the anode of this diode is connected to the ground and the cathode connected to, to 19 volt power rail so then the 19 volt will pass through this resistor this is current sense resistor okay current sense resistor and then goes and pass through this switch so this is basically the source drain and here we have the gates okay and then here we have the charge ic this is the charge ic oz8691 aln this is the charge ic okay so basically this charge ic is the ic that is responsible to generate the control signal for this switch so once we have 19 volt here the 19 volt will not pass to the other side until it receives the control signal from this ic okay here basically this is one of the most important circuits in the laptop motherboard because the laptop can work using the adapter from here okay and then we will get here the v adapter as you can see we have plus v adapter so here plus v adapter will be distributed to whole motherboard or if the adapter is not installed the laptop can be worked with just the battery okay so here the voltage will be generated here from the battery and then pass through this this inductors and then goes directly here this is basically a protection diode here we have two protection diodes as you can see and then we will get the battery charge here and then it will be distributed to the whole motherboard so of course another thing is that this ic is the responsible to charge the battery okay so let's see all the components that we have here that we have here so this is the power jack here this is ceramic capacitor okay this is inductors or coils okay this is the symbol for the ground this is basically analog ground here we have zener diode this is current sense resistor so let's zoom a little bit so this is basically the current sense resistor okay here we have two resistors we have pr so for resistor pr or r here this is thermal capacitor we have here pq this is basically the mosfet its reference is qm 1316d here basically this is the ic so the symbol for the ic this is its reference if you have a bad ic you should replace it with the same reference so here all these are ceramic capacitors this is zener diode here we have inductor pl7 here also we have current sense resistor this is the battery connector as you can see here so this symbol means the direction of the signal this is mb data 
and MP clock. So this signal goes to page 25. This 25 means if you go to page 25, you will, will, you will find these two signals. So basically this point here, this pink point means we have here connection. So in the IC you will find some abbreviation like this EN means enable. This is basically enable. Here we have V out. So the voltage will be out from here. This is the VCC, okay? The voltage. Here basically this is the power good. CL means the clock. This means not connected, okay? No connection, as you can see. Here we have no connection. This is basically the VN, okay? VN, as you can see. We have here plus VN. It should be 19 volt. So always VN pass through this inductor. This is a filtering inductor. And then through many capacitors. All these capacitors has a purpose of filtering capacitors. So its value, as you can see, is marked here. We have 2200 P means picofarad. That's why we call these capacitors PF, picofarad capacitors. Okay? And we have 50 volts. Here, as you can see, as I told you before, this is the direction of the signal. So this signal is generated by, by this IC and goes to another IC. But here, these two signals are received by this IC. As you can see, we have enable. This is enable. Here we have power good. This is the VN. This is the ground AC and this is the LX. Basically, this is the output. This IC generates after receiving all the signals. It generates, as you can see, this power 1.05 volt. Of course, this power should pass always through inductor and through some capacitors to be filtered. And then when we get, as you can see here, 1.5 volt. So for this is basically resistor. Here we have its value 10K or 10 kilo ohms. For this resistor, for example, we have 11.3K. We have here 15K and so on. If you find, for example, that this resistor is bad, you should replace it with another SMD resistor with the same value. Here, as you can see, this is chemical capacitors, okay? This is polarized capacitors, and this is not polarized, this is ceramic capacitor. Here, basically, this is a double MOSFET. We have two MOSFET inside, as you can see. This is the drain, D for drain, J for gate, and S for cells. So this is basically NTC resistor. Okay, this is NTC resistor. So this is ceramic capacitor. Here we have another ceramic capacitor. Its value is 1000 picofarads and 50 volts. So the ceramic capacitor is always connected to the ground in one side, as you can see. Always connected to the ground in one side. This is basically a basic circuit where we have IC, we have here inductor, and here we have the voltage, we get plus 1.05 volt. So to get this voltage, we need an inductor. So always inductor, as I told you before, exists in the power rail. You can never find inductor connected to the ground. Here this is basically current sense resistor, okay? We have PR. This is current sense resistor. Those are diodes, as you can see. This is a normal diodes, PD12, PD9, and PD8. This is basically diodes. Here we have the anode, and here the cathode. Anode, cathode. So here we have resistors. This is basically resistors. The value of this resistor is 10k or 10 kilo ohms and for this resistor we have 31.6k in every circuit in the motherboard this is the working principle basically so so every circuit in the motherboard has as a purpose to generate a certain 
voltage. For example, let's assume for this circuit, it generates this voltage. So this is basically the VTT, the VTT circuit. So the VTT is the voltage for RAM terminals. Okay. okay. So we need always an IC, a controller IC, and two MOSFETs or more, and an inductor for filtering purposes with a chemical capacitor. So this is basically the important component. And here we have the part or the test point where we will check whether we get this voltage or not. This is of course the V in, the 19 volts, comes from here and will pass through this inductor and through these four capacitors, these filtering capacitors, and then and then goes directly to this MOSFET to drain of this MOSFET. And when this MOSFET is activated by this IC, it will lead the voltage to pass to the source and then goes to the drain of this MOSFET. Okay? This MOSFET also will be activated by this IC. It will receive the drive low, the control signal, and then it will the voltage will pass through this inductor and then will be filtered by this capacitor and this capacitor also and we will get here 1.25 volts. So always this is the same working principle for every circuit in the motherboard. The difference is in terms of number of MOSFETs, of chemical capacitors, etc. So as you can see, always the inductor can never connect, be connected to the ground. It is always connected to the power rail. As you can see here also the inductor connected to the power rail. That's why you can use the inductor to determine the short circuit in the motherboard.